All right, I think it's high time we start talking about how you're actually gonna make money from your website. In this video, I wanna walk through a whole bunch of different ways that bloggers are using to monetize their sites. I wanna talk about when is appropriate to use each one, um, who should use each one, as well as just some background information and some tips for how to be successful. Now, a lot of these have their own course within Project 24. We will link out to those from the text below where I'll kind of outline a lot of this information as well. When it's time for you to start implementing some of these on your website, I highly recommend that you go watch the complete course on each one. But for now, this information is going to be really helpful to help you understand what's possible, how much you might be able to earn, as well as uh, when you might consider starting to implement some of these on your website. The first way that most bloggers are making money from their sites is through affiliate marketing. Simply put, this is when you link out to a product that you don't even sell and you earn a commission when people make a purchase. Some high level basics, things that you should know about affiliate marketing um, are as follows. One, there are affiliate programs for like everything. You probably have no idea that stores like Walmart and Lowe's and Home Depot and um, PetSmart and Chewy.com and everybody has an affiliate program. By far the most popular affiliate program on the web is Amazon and that is simply because they'll accept pretty much anyone. As long as you make at least three sales within the first six months, your application is going to be accepted. Now you can get kicked out of Amazon for breaking their rules at any time, but as long as you follow their guidelines, you're going to be just fine. A couple of specific little things that you'll probably want to know about in affiliate marketing are as follows. There's the cookie duration. This is a period of time after which somebody clicks on your link that contains a tracking code that sends people over to buy the product. The window of time after they click that link in which if they make a purchase, you earn a commission. That's the cookie duration. On Amazon, it's only 24 hours, but we've seen this be 24 hours, seven days, 10 days, 15 days, a month, sometimes longer depending upon the program. Another thing to just notice is the commission structure that different affiliate programs have. Amazon's is based on what category the product falls under. Um, some of them are just a set, you earn 10% or you earn 15% or you earn three or 4% um, and they will vary widely. We've seen some info products with um, commissions of 50% or more. And so it just really depends on what the product is and how much they really want your help in selling the product. One of the easiest ways I found to find affiliate programs is simply to start with the product. I like to start with the product simply because I don't want to just go look for the highest paying affiliate program and then go recommend that product without actually like really like testing it. I'd rather start if there's a product that I really like, I'd love to start from that end. Now, the easiest way then to do that is to search either by the brand or by the stores that you know that sell that particular product online. Um, start there and just search the name of that store. So let's say it's Chewy.com sells this certain pet thing that you really like. So, um, search Chewy.com affiliate program. Google's going to give you the answer. They're going to tell you exactly where to find that affiliate program. A lot of these stores like Chewy don't host their own affiliate programs like Amazon does. They'll run it through an affiliate network. These are networks like ShareSale, CJ, um, Ratukin Marketing, AvantLink, uh, ClickBank. There's just a whole bunch of these. There's several more that I didn't even list here. And each one of those networks has hundreds of sellers, products you've never even heard of, lots of info products and things. The other route is to start with those networks and go search for products that you wouldn't know exist otherwise. For example, going to ClickBank, and looking for ebooks on the topic that is your website. You may be able to find a really, really good ebook on ClickBank that you could pitch to your audience um, and earn a pretty high commission for because ebooks, I mean, the cost to the owner of the ebook is nothing to sell an additional one. So even if they only get to keep 50% of the revenue, they make money from your marketing. It's pretty awesome. So who should do affiliate marketing? Basically, every blogger should do affiliate marketing to some degree. Affiliate marketing does not preclude you from doing any other type of monetization on your website. Um, you can do it like to the extreme and be very product focused, or you can do a little bit of it here and there and do more monetization and other things. But I think pretty much every blogger should have some type of affiliate marketing that they're doing. 
It's one of the most passive ways to earn an income from your website. Now, when should you start doing affiliate marketing? One of the biggest limitations is these affiliate programs themselves. A lot of these stores want to see that you have a reasonable amount of traffic before they'll even accept you into their affiliate program. One big exception to that is Amazon, who will pretty much let you in at any time. As long as you can make those three sales within the first 180 days, you'll get to stay in. But other than those limitations, there's really nothing preventing you from starting affiliate marketing as early as now. So how much can you earn from affiliate marketing? Really, that can go anywhere from about $0 per thousand page views to pretty much anything, okay? We have, we've had people who did a really good job of selling like one, like one affiliate product, but it's just the one thing that they pushed with their site and who were earning thousands of dollars every single month from that one affiliate product. But we've also had lots of sites where the affiliate piece was kind of a smaller piece. And so you're seeing affiliate earnings more in the maybe 10 to $20 per thousand page views range. And I'd say that 10 to $20 per thousand page views on your site is a pretty reasonable range to expect for um, affiliate earnings unless you're just really rocking it with a really good affiliate program. The next most common way that bloggers are earning an income from their sites is through ads. Like affiliate marketing, this can be extremely passive. Basically, people come to your site, there's ads being displayed to them, and you earn a commission for those. Now, probably the most popular way that people put ads on their sites is through just Google AdSense. This is not the way that we recommend. The payouts from Google AdSense, unless you really know what you're doing and place ads in the right places and stuff, you're not gonna be able to earn nearly as much as what people are earning from other ad networks. Other ad networks are still, they're still putting out ads that are served through Google's ad exchange, but it's, it's different. Now we have an entire course in Project 24 about how ads work and how to implement them on your site successfully. Now who should do ads? I really think most blog owners should do ads to some degree. Now, if you have a sales page where you're actually like selling a product, I would probably make that page not have ads. And the ad networks that we work with are really good about giving you the option to, to not place ads on specific pages or even on certain categories or types of pages across your entire website. Likewise, if you have a, a page or a blog post that's really, really well monetized with affiliate products, that may be one where you just don't wanna display a bunch of other ads. You just wanna keep it really clean and focus on making the sale of that really good affiliate product. But other than those types of situations, most websites that want to be monetized should implement ads to some degree. Now, when is the best time to start doing ads on your website? Well, we found that when a site is brand new, the ad earnings are so low because it does require traffic to get ads that they don't really add any value to you at first. But if you have too many ads on your website at the very beginning, it can actually kind of slow down the process of Google starting to uh, trust your website. So we like to start off websites with zero ads until at least you reach a thousand page views per month on your website. Now that's a limitation that we're recommending. It's not one that's being imposed. At any time that you'd like to, you can go take our ads course and you can start implementing ads on your website. There's nothing stopping you. Now, how much do you earn from ads? We have found that ad earnings usually tend to vary somewhere between about $7 per thousand page views on your website to 30 plus dollars per thousand page views on your website. We've seen sites earning $80 per thousand page views because of the way they're implementing ads, also because of the industries that they're in. There's just a lot of factors that determine how much you earn. But most sites from Project 24 members earn somewhere in about the $12 to $30 range, um, just based on most recent estimates and survey data that we have. Now the next one isn't used as often, but it's a lot like affiliate marketing, and it's called lead generation, or lead gen for short. This is where you basically, I mean, you have your site on a certain topic, all the people that come to that site have cert a certain interest or something specific in common, and you're taking those people and giving them some sort of an offering to be contacted by a professional that does whatever it is, right? So this is pretty common in the financial space, but it's often, it's also not uncommon with um, kind of high ticket sales, uh, cars, RVs, um, even homes and stuff, real estate, 
basically what you're doing is you're saying, hey, if you're interested to learn more about this, uh, you can enter your name and email address, some contact information, maybe a phone number into this form, and you'll be contacted by a professional that's local in your area that can work with you on this. And then you earn money by selling those leads to those professionals, those people that now they have leads of people who are actually interested in their product or service that they can reach out to directly. Now this is, uh, this is usually not as simple and straightforward or as passive as affiliate marketing. And the reason for that is there isn't like a big lead gen network in most industries where you can just like sell the leads into one big thing. Um, people that are really successful with lead gen oftentimes have to make contacts all over the place of people that will either buy the leads and then distribute them further or the actual like end provider um, in various places all around the country. So you can see how that could get pretty complicated. Now we do have a course on lead gen here in Project 24. So if that is something that you think might be applicable to you, I recommend that you go watch that course. I think for most bloggers, um, in a lot of the kind of hobby industries and stuff, it's not going to make as much sense. But for those for whom it does make sense, it can actually have really, really high payouts. We've seen situations where fairly low traffic drives a really substantial income, even a full-time income from relatively low traffic. So it could be worth it. And if that's something you want to learn more about, definitely go check out that course. Probably once you start to get to a point where you've written quite a bit of content on your site, and you're pretty comfortable that you know your industry pretty well. All right, the next way to monetize a site is my favorite, uh, and it's through info products. All this is, is taking information and packaging it up in a really valuable, really helpful way for people, and then selling that information, usually in a bundle of formats. Project 24 is an example of an info product. It contains video courses, it contains um, oftentimes printable cheat sheets and helpers. It contains a private podcast. It contains a community. It contains numerous other resources and even some software tools and things like that. There's so much that's packaged into this info product. We also have a course on info products here in Project 24 that teaches the principles of how to come up with the right info product for your own audience as well as how to create that product, the different formats available, how to do each one, how to package it up, how to market it, and how to sell it on your website. So that's all included in that course. Now, who should do info products? I do think that there are, there are people that maybe shouldn't, and that's usually because you want your website to stay more passive. As soon as you start selling your own product, you are going to have some customer support issues. Some people are going to want refunds and are not going to like the product that well. Some people are, um, are just going to have questions and issues and follow up. So you're going to have some level of customer support. You're probably going to be needing to update this product over time as you discover ways to teach better. We're doing that all the time with our info products. So info products aren't for, for everyone. However, they are for the people who really want to turn this into their full-time thing. This is where I make my income is from my blog. And so I'm going to have an info product and it's going to be awesome. When should you do an info product? For an info product, I'd recommend that most people hold off till they're getting somewhere between 30 and 50,000 page views per month on their site. The reason for that is it just takes volume to be able to get some sales. There's a, a pretty sharp um, drop off of people who like from the people that come to my site to the people that will click one of the links on my site to take them to the sales page where they learn about the product to there it's even fewer people that actually buy the product. And so it's in addition to being a marketing game, it's also a numbers game and you just need relatively high volume to get to that. 30 to 50,000 page views per month is something that a lot of sites are accomplishing within about a year in project 24. So how much can you earn from info products? Really? It ranges anywhere from zero, which is basically when there's either a product mismatch, it's not the right product for your audience, or there's a marketing, a communication mismatch, and you're not able to clearly articulate what the value of that product is for your audience. So we see that. We've seen definitely the zero side, but going up to really no limit on how much you can earn from your info products. And the reason that it's just so valuable is because the cost of each additional sale, that's your marginal cost, is basically zero dollars. You create this product 
and every sale is profit. And so you earn substantially more than when you're earning two, three, four, five percent affiliate commission or a little bit here and there from ads. So again, when you're starting to hit that mark, you've got to about 30,000 page views. I highly recommend you go check out the 10 day info products course here in project 24. I think it's going to be really eye opening for you. Okay. But we are not done. <laughs> There's still a couple more. The next one is e-commerce. E-commerce is pretty straightforward. We've all seen Shopify, Etsy, um, you know, on WordPress, there's the WooCommerce plugin. There's a lot of ways to create a store on your website. And basically the way that this works is you have actual products that you sell. Now, e-commerce could include digital products as well. You know, we obviously kind of separated those out into their own thing, info products. And so when we say e-commerce, we're more talking about physical products, something that you are selling. So who should do e-commerce? Really, if this is something you're already doing, let's say you already have a local business set up and you're already selling these products, or you're even doing it online, like I said, through Etsy or Shopify. Well, in your case, absolutely, like include this with your blog, make it all part of one business and use that blog to drive loads more traffic without having to pay for a bunch of ads. We have seen this work tremendously well. But if you're starting up the blog and hadn't really thought about e-commerce and thinking, well, maybe that's another way I can make money from my blog, in that case, I would really look at it carefully. Is the whole business of, you know, getting products and like physically having to ship them out all over the place, is that something you really want to get into? It's not at all passive. And so if you don't have that already set up or weren't already planning to set that up, I would just think hard about whether or not that's the business you want to get into. If it is, it's a great way to continue to monetize your website. If it's not, then no harm done. There are a lot more passive ways that you can continue to make an income from your website. Um, and if you want to sell your own products, again, if there's information you can sell, it's a fantastic way to make money. The profit margins are very high. Okay. And now I have to address one more and that is merch. <laughs> this could be viewed as another type of e-commerce. Um, typically when you sell merch merchandise, um, this is usually branded stuff, um, with your brand, right? With the brand of your blog on it. When you're selling that, usually you're going to fulfill that through another company. There are companies that you can work with that will actually make the product for you and ship the product for you. And you just earn a piece of, you know, the profit on the very top who should do merch. If you have built up a brand of actual following, then it might be time to consider some merch. If somebody would want to wear your logo on a shirt or a hat or put it on their coffee mug, or if you have, you know, fun, like quippy little sayings that you use all the time and inside jokes, like you just have a following, you have, you have people, you know, your people. If you have that again, merch could be a way to not only earn a little bit more money from your blog, but to also really get people to buy into the brand. A lot of blogs don't really have this. What a lot of blogs have is really transactional viewers, people that come in, read an article, maybe a second article and leave and may or may not ever come back to your blog again. To develop more of a following, you usually have to incorporate some other type of media, podcasts, videos, that kinds of things for people to really buy into the brand. It can be done through blogs, but it's usually done more through social media today. But if you do build that up, merch can be an opportunity. How much can you really earn from merch? It's not, it's not like, um, really any of the other opportunities that we talked about today. Uh, again, unless you build up the kind of brand and create the kind of designs in products that people would really want to wear and that would actually turn trendy, right? Short of that, it's more of just a little add on that can be kind of fun and also get more buy-in for your brand. Wow. So that was a bunch of stuff. Like I've said, there are a lot of ways to monetize a blog and by no means is this an exhaustive list. However, for most sites, affiliate marketing and ads are going to be the primary drivers of income on their site until they reach a point where an info product makes sense, at which point that's an addition that you may consider making to take the earnings from your blog to a next level.